I bought this rechargeable 9V battery 2 years ago. I'm not happy with it because its capacity decreases quickly. I fully charged this 9V battery but in just a few seconds, the voltage quickly drops. The main reason is that the battery is made up of these 7 cylindrical cells which is a nickel metal hydride cell and this nickel metal hydride cell is not as good as a lithium ion or lithium polymer battery. Lipo and Li ion battery are widely used in portable gadgets nowadays because they are better and they last longer. So I came up with this idea. I will make a rechargeable 9 volts battery using a lithium polymer battery. The maximum voltage of this battery is only 4.2 volts. But how can we make it 9 volts? Well, by using a boost converter or aka a step up converter, we can convert 4.2 volts to 9 volts. This is the block diagram. This is the charging port for charging and this LED will light up when the charger is connected. It will pass in this BMS and safely charges the battery. The boost converter is conducted in the BMS module and it converts the low voltage to 9 volts and all of these parts will be placed inside a normal 9 volts battery enclosure. Alright, so let's start this project. First off, we need to buy an adjustable boost converter that can be powered with a range of 4.2 volts to 2.5 volts. But in my case, I have this small boost converter with 5 volts output. Only 5 volts output. But how can we adjust the output to 9 volts? In most converter, we can adjust output by changing the value of each resistor network which is connected in the output terminal. I can't find the data sheet of this converter but I just traced the circuit and this is how it looks. We can observe that the circuit of this is just like with this converter because it also has a resistor network that is connected in the output and it has a pin namely the feedback pin which senses the voltage across this R2. The feedback pin is actually connected to a comparator that compares it to a reference voltage. In this converter, it's 1.25 volts. But in this converter, we don't know yet the reference voltage because we don't have its data sheet. Nevertheless, in this circuit, the rule is that the two inputs of the comparator will always be equal. So, to know the reference voltage of this boost converter, we will measure the voltage across the feedback pin. To do this, we must power this 5 volts converter and I did not film it but it's 0.6 volts. So, 0.6 volts is the reference and we will use that later in our calculation so we can say the total voltage is equal to the total current times the total resistance which is R1 and R2 we know that the total voltage is also our output voltage because these resistors are connected in the output of our boost converter we also know that the total current is equal to V2 or the voltage of the resistor 2 and divided by the resistance of R2. In this equation, we already know the V out or output voltage because it is our desired output voltage which will be 9 volts. We already know 
V2 which is 0.6 volts because remember we will always see 0.6 volts in the V2 because it is connected in the feedback pin so our unknown here is R2 and R1 however we can put a known value for R2 so we can solve for R1 or we will do the reverse we will put a known value for R1 so we can solve for R2 for example you pick 1 kilo ohm for R2 now our only unknown is R1 so we will solve the value for R1 and it results a 14 kilo ohm so in order to output 9 volts we will need a 14 kilo ohm resistor for R1 and 1 kilo ohm resistor for R2 there's also an important thing to note here in selecting the value for R1 and R2 the range is it should be greater than 1 kilo ohm and less than 1 mega ohm because if you use a very low resistance for these two resistors a large amount of current will flow in these resistors and that's an unwanted current but in my case I have these two resistors I add the two values and it is the value for my R2 and it results 154 kilo ohm for R1 and I have this 150 kilo ohm which is near to 154 kilo ohm so I use this 150 kilo ohm for the value of R1 I know that the output voltage will not be perfectly 9 volts because these resistors have a tolerance and I do not have an exact 154 kilo ohm resistor but if you are lazy to use that equation, you can just use the app called Every Circuit. Set the voltage source to 9 volts. Then make a resistor network that gives a 0.6 volts. And finally, we got it near 0.6 volts. But there's also an easy way to adjust output voltage by putting a potentiometer across the output, and that's it. Now you can control the output voltage by turning the potentiometer but in my case I don't have a small potentiometer that will fit in a normal 9 volts battery enclosure so I will just use my salvage resistors now I remove the two original resistors as well as the USB port to save room for the other components I solder the calculated resistors in place and we see the voltage did not reach 9 volts to solve this problem, I paralleled a 2.2K resistor on the 1 kilo ohm resistor and it finally produced 9 volts. This is my salvage lithium polymer battery. However, using this kind of battery needs a BMS or also known as battery management system. According to its datasheet, this beam is can protect the battery from overcharge, over discharge, as well as overcurrent. You can buy one or get a BMS from old cell phone batteries. It's already inside. We will use this kind of connector for charging. For the enclosure, we will need a dead 9 volts battery. I cut it into half using a hacksaw. I removed the guts and cleaned the metal casing. We will just reuse the parts of this dead battery later. Now, I connected the BMS and then the LiPo cell. Next, I soldered the output terminal. I found another LiPo cell so I paralleled it to increase the capacity. Now, I glued the charging port and LED indicator in this piece of plastic. This will be the bottom part of the battery. I finally connected it to the main circuit. Wrapping the circuit with tape can help to avoid short circuit. I joined the top and the bottom part with the help of these two wooden sticks. I carefully inserted the circuit in place and soldered the enclosure to securely join the two pieces. I covered the soldered part to give it a clean look. And it's done. After that, I made this USB charging cord 
so I can charge this battery anytime because USB is anywhere. You can charge it in your laptop using a USB charger well using a power bank or anything that has a USB. You can leave this unattended because don't worry it will not overcharge. The BMS will take care of that. Okay let's test this battery. It can run my guitar tuner. It can power a car adapter with an LED attached to it. It can turn this DC motor and we can see the output is still near 9 volts. Let's try this CFL bulb. The CFL works but it's not so bright because this is rated at 12 volts. Unlike a normal battery, the voltage of this battery is pretty constant. Unlike this alkaline battery, the voltage goes down when you connect given a small load. Because obviously, it has no voltage regulation. Alright, you now know how to make a lithium polymer rechargeable 9 volts battery. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. And remember, be innovative.